I have redone my Patreon tiers. For $1 per month, you get priority on requested video topics, a fancy role in my Discord server, and access to a Patreon-only chat. For $5, you get all of that, plus early access to spare room episodes, and your name listed at the end of my videos for one month. For $10, you get everything already listed, plus a PDF copy of my ebook, 365 Days of Character Development, and an exclusive sticker fulfilled by Patreon. Once we see how this goes, I may be adding more merch in the future, so check all of it out in the link down below. It was just a fun backdrop for him and his friends to use in their stories. Hmm. Sounds kind of like the world building that roleplay admins do for their group roleplays, huh? Spare Room with Karen Terry. Hey y'all, and welcome to Spare Room. I'm Karen Terry, and today we're going to talk about Lovecraftian horror. What is Lovecraftian horror? And how can we as role players implement some of those tropes into our role play? That's what we're going to dive into today. Lovecraftian horror is a subgenre that originated with H.P. Lovecraft. And in this genre, instead of using things like gore or shock to evoke feelings of horror, he uses fear of the unknown. It also features a pantheon of gods and creatures. Some of these were created by Lovecraft himself, some were only mentioned and then later expanded on, and some were created completely posthumously. Notable Lovecraft mythos deities include yogg sothoth the Lurker at the Threshold, Dagon, who presides over the Deep Ones, Azathoth, the Blind Idiot God, and the most famous, Cthulhu, the Great Dreamer. These gods are categorized into classes called Great Old Ones, Great Ones, Outer Gods, and Elder Gods, and you can't possibly understand their motivations, intentions, or even their very existence. Because of this unknowable pantheon feature, you'll sometimes see Lovecraftian horror called cosmic horror. This is to differentiate the subgenre from Lovecraft himself, since it's expanded and changed quite a lot since Lovecraft's death. That being said, H.P. Lovecraft is still incredibly important to the genre. He published all the way up until his death in 1937, including a bunch of works that you've probably heard of, such as The Call of Cthulhu, At the Mountains of Madness, and The Shadow Over Innsmouth. In these stories, Lovecraft deals a lot with the supernatural. He takes inspiration from authors such as Edgar Allan Poe and Lord Dunsany. And in the past decade, there's been a ton of interest in Lovecraft and Lovecraft-inspired things, and that's because all of Lovecraft's work became public domain in 2008. So we can play with it as much as we want now. So how do we do that? Some common elements of Lovecraftian horror include themes of misanthropy. Human thought and feelings are insignificant to the grander scale of the universe. And a general feeling that God doesn't care about you pervades Lovecraftian horror. Sanity is fragile. Humans are weak and can be exposed to things so beyond our comprehension, we simply lose the ability to function as an intelligent species. Coping is hard in Lovecraftian horror, and truth is often too much to bear. Slime. Instead of the typical horror of blood or bones or bodies, Lovecraft really loves slime. Dysfunctional Family Dynamics It's really common for a relative to be an antagonistic force in Lovecraft. Often, the protagonist's loved ones are portrayed as foreboding, and relatives embody supernatural elements. Social Isolation Since many of these protagonists struggle with their relationships, they're isolated during the time of their stories. It's not uncommon for Lovecraftian characters to be scholars of some sort, using their academic prowess to act like petty social obligations are beneath them. Antiquated and out-of-place styles Sometimes technology in Lovecraftian works is anachronistic if it's even mentioned at all. And the language itself might also be out of place, calling on words such as man of science instead of scientist, or using the British spelling of a word when the setting is clearly in the US. Unanswered questions this is the biggest one that really makes Lovecraftian horror into horror. You often don't know important background information or what's really going on in a Lovecraft story. All you know is what the protagonist knows. And since there are often also themes of misanthropy and losing one's sanity, sometimes the protagonist knows very little. So how do we roleplay with these tropes to make something Lovecraftian? 
Some are obvious and some not so much. I think the key is going with the flow, building things up, and letting timelines be kind of loosey-goosey. So what if your protagonist contradicts themselves? They're losing their sanity anyway. So what makes Lovecraft so special? Why do so many fantasy and science fiction and horror authors and other creatives take inspiration from his work? I think the secret is how he created his universe. If you've looked into any sort of Lovecraft's mythos, then it feels like you're actually reading a mythology. It feels like you're tapping into something deep and culturally significant. This is because he created his creatures and his world and his pantheon the same way that larger cultures create gods and goddesses and myths. He just did so on a very small scale. Much of what exists in the Lovecraft universe was created by borrowing elements from the Lovecraft Circle. This is a group of authors including Clark Ashton Smith, Robert E. Howard, Robert Bloch, Frank Bellencap Long, Henry Kuttner, and lots of others. Sorry if I butchered any pronunciations there. These authors were all writing around the same time and critiquing each other and leaning on each other for inspiration. And Lovecraft knew he was doing this. He even called his pantheon a pseudo-mythology. As far as I can tell, he never intended for his mythos to be taken seriously. It was just a fun backdrop for him and his friends to use in their stories. Hmm. Sounds kind of like the world building that roleplay admins do for their group roleplays, huh? I've shared my methods before, but just to reiterate, what I do is set up the bones and then I let my mods and my friends and the other role players all add pretty much whatever they want to it. And Lovecraft was kind of doing the same thing, taking inspiration from others while they were adding to his world and vice versa. So we're going to take a hard right here. I can't make a video about Lovecraft and not talk about who Lovecraft was as an individual. If you've been watching the HBO series Lovecraft Country or you've read the books that it's based on, you know it's all about racial tension. And that's deliberate, because H.P. Lovecraft was a white supremacist. He was deeply anti-Semitic, he was a fan of Hitler, and he had a bunch of reasons that he thought lynching black people in America was an okay thing to do. Links down in the description to sources on all of that. And unfortunately for those that prefer to lean towards death of the author like I've done before, you really can't separate Lovecraft's white supremacy from his fiction. This is the thing that his fear of the unknown is based on. In reality, Lovecraft wasn't scared of some sentient black hole devouring the earth. He was scared of losing his privileged place in a hierarchical society. And all of the main Lovecraft horror elements support this. The misanthropy, the sanity is fragile, the dysfunctional family dynamics, social isolation, antiquated and out of place styles, unanswered questions, you get the idea. Well, except for slime. I don't know why Lovecraft loves slime so much. So does this mean you shouldn't participate or consume Lovecraftian horror? I can't answer that for you. But now you know so that you can decide for yourself. So there is a lot of inspiration to be taken from Lovecraftian horror, and the way that he built his world is a lot like the way I do it and the way a lot of role players do it, so there's a lot to learn there. So what do you guys think? Do you guys use some of these themes in your writing? Now that you've heard about them, are you interested in implementing some of them? Let me know down below. I'm really curious to hear where you guys stand and how you guys feel about it. And of course, as always, don't forget to make it a great day.